Hey Chris, what are you watching? Hey guys, I'm watching CSI Canada. It's my favorite show. Cool. I didn't know you watched that. I do. It's so exciting. There was this episode where a guy was in a car crash and they saved his life. It was incredible how lifelike they made that. Yeah, I saw that episode, but you know, that's not how you do CPR or use a defibrillator. Listen, Sarah, I'm pretty sure they know what they're talking about in the show. Okay, I think we need to get to the bottom of this and I know the exact right person to talk to here at HSN. Hi Chris, I'm Suzanne. Welcome to the HSN Sim Lab. It's a pleasure to be here, Suzanne. Great. So here at the lab, we provide an environment for high quality simulation based education. A big part of what we do here is teach how to perform excellent CPR. We help train nurses, paramedic, doctors and other health professions. We also work closely with the Northern Ontario School of Medicine and Laurentian University students. So today you're going to learn about CPR defibrillators and you're even going to practice on one of our mannequins so whenever you're ready Excellent. go in. Thank you very much I'm very excited. Hi Chris I'm Dr. Anderson and I'm the medical lead of the uh, Health Science North Simulation Lab here. It's my understanding you want to learn a little bit more about CPR. Absolutely that would be great Dr. Anderson. Perfect that's one of my favorite topics to talk about. So one of the things that's changed in the last little while is that uh, the, we're really de-emphasizing the things like um, mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation and, and other things like that, really focusing on what matters, which is good hard chest compressions. The first thing we need to do is set up so that we can do good hard chest compression. So when we do that, we're going to landmark across from the armpits, okay. okay, right in the middle on the sternum. After you do that, you're going to place your hands with your palm down mm -hmm. and interlock your fingers. Okay. All right, so now you're set up. From here on in, we want to focus on three things. Uh, adequate compression rate, okay. adequate compression depth, and full recoil. Okay. So first is rate, and our goal is going to be 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Okay. Which is um, about the same pace as the song "Staying Alive." Oh yes. So it's going to be about that fast. fast. Yeah. The second thing is going to be compression depth. So it's a good hard push. We want to actually push, compress the chest down five centimeters. Okay. The third thing that we want to do is make sure that while we're pushing fast and hard, that we actually allow the chest to fully recoil so that our hands come completely up. Okay. So you don't want to actually lean too, too hard. Okay. Okay. We're going to try and do that for two whole minutes before we, we switch with another provider. You know, I love watching hospital TV shows. What are some myths that you see when you're watching those types of shows? You know what? I love, I love hospital TV shows too, yeah. but there's a lot of things that that are suggested there that aren't actually true. Okay. So uh, one of them is that you can get sued if you do CPR wrong. Yeah. And that's absolutely false. Okay. As long as what you're trying to do is everything you can to try and help someone, the right. Good Samaritan law will, uh, will will certainly protect you. Okay. Another one that you'll that you'll see is that sometimes uh, they'll talk about breaking ribs as they do chest mm -hmm. compressions, and that's actually true. We do occasionally break ribs as we're doing chest compressions and. And that's okay because okay. what we're trying to do is save someone's life. Right. Um, it's you know not ideal, but we do the best that we can. Yeah, it's more important to save the person's Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Fair enough. Now another myth that you often see is with defibrillator paddles. You always yeah. see them going right on their chest. Um, is there, something tells me there's a myth with that as well. Well, so number one is the yeah. is the defibrillator paddles. Yeah. In fact, it's really rare that we that we even use you defibrillator use paddles okay. anymore. We have pads now, which are much safer and they're much okay. better for patients. Secondly, you'll see them putting them right here on the front of the chest. What we tend to do is uh, one pad goes on uh, the anterior part of the right part of the chest okay. and the other goes around the left side. Okay. And that way it kind of sandwiches the heart in between the two pads mm -hmm. and then the electrical current can go right between the two. So, now you know a little bit more about CPR. Yeah. Do you want to give it a try? Absolutely, that would be great. And this mannequin can actually uh, measure the quality of CPR and actually we can get out of a report card at the end. Oh good. See. Oh good. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get on my bench here, okay. we're going to landmark, so right in the center, right in the center, put my hands over here, okay, my shoulders over top, and let's begin. That's great CPR, remember you want to get a good hard chest compression. Oh wow, he's really good. Yeah, he is. Fantastic job, Chris. That was truly outstanding CPR. One of the things that we can do is show you the, the 
quality of the CPR that you did on that mannequin in a report card. And so this is a report card. So your overall score is 100%. Excellent. So great work. Thank you very much. Absolutely. One of the things that we notice here is every once in a while, you'll see these little yellow dots. And that means you weren't allowing the chest to recoil okay. quite, quite far enough. What we do see is that you actually had great chest compression depth, almost six centimeters. Excellent. Um, and that's probably why you were having trouble recoiling is because you're pushing so hard, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but this is just something to remember. And then we can look at your rate, which is right here. And it was 113 per minute, which is perfect. perfect. That's right in the middle. Right in the middle. That's very reassuring. Now, one of the things that you noticed it was very fatiguing to do two minutes of, of great CPR. So that's why you always want to have someone else to change off with. And then you can coach each other to make sure that, you've got, that you're doing a great job. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time today, Dr. Oh, Anderson. No I have to say it was very, very different doing CPR here today and seeing it on TV. So I'm glad you were able to, uh, to uh, bust some of those myths for us. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick. And I'm Sarah. And this was our CPR episode of Myth Fracture. Do you have a myth that you'd like to see fractured? Share it with us in the comments and you might see it in a future episode.